this uh, recording here, guys. So, in the, the first one, in the first example here, just wanting to find the mean of the first class and the second class. And then what I want you to do is just kind of compare the two classes all together, right? Yeah. yeah so it's for class one is 76, for class two is 75. 76? Yeah. Wait, how did you get that so fast? Because we already started doing it. Okay, yeah, so 76. Did everyone get that? Can I'll just give everyone touch just to make sure we got the same answer. Thanks, man. Am I thinking of the wrong one? Mean is when you add all the values and then divide by, yeah, which you, is 10. You did that too quick. I think that's wrong. We can double check. So. Just guessing. I think you guessed it. You over here guessing. <laughs> Yeah, I got 76 as well. Uh, yeah, me too. Okay, 76%. And then for the second one? Oh, there's a 30 in there, so that's going to be low. Yeah. I got seven hundred uh, 75%. Did everyone get that for the second one? I don't know how to do it. Okay, so they're obviously pretty close means, right? So let's just say they had 10 students. It's funny because I think when I wrote this example a while back, I was like, well, it's so unrealistic to have 10 students in a class. And I'm like, oh, I 10 students in one class right now. Uh, so 76 and 75%. Um, so what do we notice between the marks? Like just generally speaking. Yeah. In class one, the marks are all like pretty similar. For class two, there's like who are doing really bad, who are doing really good. Yeah, exactly. Like it evens out in the end. It evens out in the end, but it's like, yeah, exactly kind of going back to what Joe was saying, right? Like, it does even out, but it almost looks like if you were to look at this, you're like, well, class one has pretty consistent marks, right? Like, everyone seems to be in this, actually, everyone is in the 70s or 80s, right? So, pretty consistent marks, pretty consistent marks there, but no one's really doing, like, you know, exceptional, super duper well, right? Like, everyone's just kind of like, you know, well, good. They're good. They're, they're where they need to be. Class two is a lot more variation, right? Got some really high marks, some 80s, some 90s, but then you have these extremely low marks, 45, 35. They drag down the mean quite a bit more. So it's just interesting because I think conceptually you might look at that and be like, wow, like they have some really high achievers in that class, so they're probably going to have a really high average, uh, high mean. But you also have to consider the fact that there's some really low marks, right? Those low marks actually bring down this Those low marks actually bring down the average quite a bit more, right? Uh, so even though the classes might look similar, um, there are definitely some subtle differences between them, right? Um, so we notice that the marks in a class one, what would we say? They're a bit closer to each other, right? So they are closer, while the marks in class two are more, they're more spread, right? They're more spread out. So you can see that the marks in class two are just kind of all over the place, right? Um, so they they both did well, and overall, the mean does... So even though the mean is great, like they, it tells you that most people are kind of in the 70s, would you say that, especially for class two, is that mean very accurate? Because not actually, there's not really that many people that have marks in the 70s anyways, right? It's actually only two of them. So the mean only gives you some picture of what the data looks like, right? It doesn't tell you everything. So this is when we really have to look further and say, is there something else I can measure to tell me overall how the whole class is doing? Not just the people in the middle, but the whole class, right? And this is where we get to measure the spread. We're essentially trying to measure out how far does that data range, right? Because even though both classes have an overall mean around the 70s, one class has marks that are really close into each other. They're quite consistent. And the other class has marks that are kind of all over the place. So it's important to consider that as well, not just the mean. So a couple of important words here. I'm just going to go through them. Uh, first one, interquartile range. So I'll talk about this one. So range is the difference between the maximum value 
and the minimum value. So if we have a set of data, it's the, the difference between the maximum and the minimum. So we take the smallest one and the and the largest one, and we simply subtract them all. That's what the range is. How many of you have heard of quartiles? Does that ring a bell? Elementary school, maybe? Yeah, you might have done it, maybe. Uh, I know some people did it, maybe. And if you haven't, don't worry about it. So quartiles are basically three different values that subdivide your whole data, right? Uh, the word quartile actually comes from, you know, the fact that you're going to kind of split it in four. So there's three of them. There's three of them for a reason, right? Because if we have a whole range of data, if you want to split up into four parts, you only need three different numbers. So what we essentially do is we subdivide our, our data into four separate parts. And I'm going to draw what it looks like here. So Q1, that this first one is the median of the lower half of the data. Okay, and I'll explain what I mean by the lower half. So if I were to take the whole data, I split it in half. I look at the lower half of the data and I find the median just for that. And then Q2 is actually the median of the whole entire data. So not just the lower half or the upper half, it's the median of the whole data. And then the last one is the median of the upper half. And I totally meant upper half, not lower half. That's what I meant to say. So Q3 is the median of the upper half of the data. So what this looks like on a on a line here, and I'm going to show you what this what this means. First thing is obviously we look for the median in the whole entire piece of data, right? So here is our minimum value. This is the lowest that we can go, and this is the highest that we can go, right? Minimum and maximum. So what we have here is I'm going to kind of draw what Q1, Q2, Q3 look like on the line. Q2 is the median. So Q2 is somewhere right in the middle, right? What do you think? Right there? Looks like it's kind of in the middle, right? Q3, sorry, Q1 is then the median of this lower half here. So the median of the lower half, I would say if you were approximating, it's like somewhere right here. This is Q1. And then Q3 is the median of the upper half of the data. So where would you say this is? So we're like right here. That's basically what we're doing is we're splitting up our data into, first we're splitting it up in half, and then we're basically splitting it up in half in the lower end and half in the upper end, right? And the reason this is helpful is because it actually splits our data up into four different quarters, hence the name quartile. We have the, the lower quarter, the second quarter there, then we have third quarter, and then the fourth quarter, the upper half, sorry, the upper quarter. Does that make sense? So it kind of splits it up to four different intervals. Everyone understand that so far? So it's basically minimum Q1, then Q1 to Q2, Q2 to Q3, and then Q3 all the way up to the maximum. So we have four different parts. Does everyone understand this so far? We'll look at an example. I think the example, actually the picture here, I feel like this one is pretty good at illustrating this. So first thing we notice is that our data can be split in half, right? Do we have 10 pieces of data? So what's the point that's right in the middle? We know that's gonna be between the fifth and the sixth one. So right in between the fifth and the sixth one, we have, uh, we have to find the average or the, the average of 53 and 55. So 53 plus 55 divided by 2 is? This is unrelated. Yeah, Wait, sure. This is like a little ahead, but would you take the mean of like all of them or do you just kind of leave them separate? Like, because I'm yeah. saying like you could like, say you get the median of the lower half, meaning of the, all the data, meaning of the uh, upper half, you could like add them up and then just divide it by 3 to see what you get kind of like. Uh, actually, I never, I don't think that's, uh, I don't think that's one of the calculations that we do, but I never thought about that, but that would be a good. That'd be like probably your guess. Kind of. uh, that would, what that would give you though, it's just kind of, if you're looking at the median, actually that's a good question. No, because like, I think you'd like, if you get the median of, like if you look at the median of all of them, oh, you're just going to get the, the data as a whole. But if you do the mean of them all, it might not be. It probably won't be. No, I don't so think it'll be like a probably a fair average kind of thing, because you're looking at like, the lower is the higher, and then overall. I never actually thought about that. I, I don't know if these are. I'm not taking it. 
the, taking the meat yeah, of the yeah. Cortez, the Q1, Q2, you know? I don't think that would be, like, that helpful because it's very easy to take positive data. So, like, there's no point in... Yeah, but, like, say instead of, like, on your, like, um... Like report card, like instead of doing like just the median, you do the mean of like the core count. Yeah, so like that's not really. I don't know if you're calculating the mean, you're gonna get a better, a more accurate number. Like, yeah. And then like I think I mentioned this in my last lesson, like you have big outliers, then you can calculate the mean and see that. Oh, okay. Like, yeah. Yeah, that was kind of the idea of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's like a better strategy. Yeah, so it, if we will, we will talk. But I mean, that's a that's a great idea. I'm glad you're thinking about that, right? Like, but one thing, one thing to kind of know is that, like, if what what's more important with the quartiles is not so much helping us to find like the the mean or like the the what the what the marks are in the middle. What it's really helping us with is just to see how far our data goes, right? Because if we know where Q three and Q one is, then we kind of know, generally speaking, where about fifty percent of our data is. That's really what it's telling us. So I, I don't want to get too specific into this, but essentially what we're the reason we use all this idea of the quartile is because it actually will help us figure out exactly where our like what percentage of data will be there. So if we're looking at this lower end here, this is 25% of our data, right? Between the minimum and the Q1. This is another 25% that's between Q2 and Q uh, sorry, Q1 and Q2. Another 25% here. And then another 25% here. It kind of splits it up into different, four different orders, right? So that generally helps us to figure out how far our data can spread. And if you're looking between Q1 and Q3, that actually gives us 50% of it, right? And that's the usefulness of this. So the difference between the first quartile and the third quartile, this is actually called our interquartile range. So our interquartile range, and I forgot to mention this over here, I'll mention it again. It contains 50% of our data, All right? So the interquartile range would be between Q1 and Q3. That contains 50% of our data there. Does that make sense? And it hopefully it does make sense because we're going from where we know that between each quartile is 25%. So if we're going from Q1 to Q3, that covers 50% altogether. So going back to this example here, the median here is 54. So that would be our Q, uh, Q2. And then what we're doing to find Q1 is we find the median of the lower end. So the median of the lower end, we can see here is 50. 52, right? So that's going to be our Q1. And then the median of the upper uh, upper end of the data is going to be Q3. So we have Q1, Q2, Q3. We can basically see that all we're doing is we're splitting, we're splitting the data in half, and then within the halves, we're splitting it again. So we end up with four different uh, four different segments for that. How are we doing so far, guys? Make sense? Okay. So let's look at an example. I feel like it's one of those things, it might seem a little difficult when you first look at it. It makes way more sense with an example, okay? Um, so this next one, we have a set of data here given to us, and it's uh, listing off the heights of the members of the 10, <coughs> sorry, the heights of uh, team members here. So all their heights are listed off, and what we want to do in this case is find the range and the interquartile range for this uh, for this set of data. So one thing I forgot to mention, hopefully you already know this. What do we need to do before we find median? Or you do anything here. What's the first step? Can I start just counting out? What do I have to do right before that? Yeah? 
Yeah. Oh, thanks. You're gonna say it. Same thing. Yeah. 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 Rearrange them. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Rearrange them for small things. Do that first before anything else. You'd be surprised how many times people forget that, right? And it, it sucks because then you get them. So just put them in order first, and then we'll, um, and then afterwards we'll find each other parts. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, I forget the room, but it's the it's just you go up the stairs, and it's like that first room stair on the on the left. So if you guys don't mind, we'll do this example first together, and then maybe I. I know it's already been long because we were collecting questions before this. We'll take a break after that and then we'll go back to various standard deviation, okay? So I just want to do this and then we'll take a quick break. All right, so uh, let's do the range first. Yep. 22 centimeters? Yep. Oh, first, actually, you know what? Oh, uh, I should put them in order first. Yeah. So 173, 176, 183, 183, 185, 87, 90. 183 is? 283s, yeah. Uh, 185, 187. 191, yep. 193, 195. Okay, perfect. Okay, so if you want to find the interquartile range, what you're going to do here is you're simply going to split the data up. And you know what? Just to make it easier. I actually don't like that. I want to put them all in one in one line. It's just I don't know, looks neater. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna divide the data in half. Well, let's start with the easy stuff. The range, and I can do the range up here. And sorry, Matt, you I know you gave me the answer already. So 195 minus 173. So how much? 22. 22. Perfect. So you take 195 minus 173. 22. And again, why is this helpful to know the range? Because then you know how well the, you know how much the about the data is going to the uh, the values are going to uh, range in your data, right? So that's really really helpful. So you know that it can go from 22 altogether, right? Uh, from the lower end to the upper end. So now we're what we're going to do is we're going to split our data in half to find the median. So we know that we have one, two, three, four, five. So the median is going to be between the fifth one and the sixth one, right? So that means our median, or Q3, Q2 is what? Yeah? 186. 186, thank you. Perfect, it's 186. So if I know that uh, 186 is the median, that means that I can split up my data into two parts. Here's the first half of it. And here is the second half. Everyone okay with this so far? So I'm just splitting it up into two separate parts, right? The upper end and the lower end. So what's the median of my uh, upper end data there? Sorry, lower end. Let's start with lower end. Yeah. Yep. 183. 183. So this is my Q1. And what's the median of the upper end there? Yep. 191. 191, perfect. You got it. Everyone understand this so far? Seems okay. And then of course the interquartile range is simply gonna be uh, Q3 minus Q1. 
So all you're doing is taking away uh, Q1 from Q3. So what's Q3? Q3 is 191 minus uh, Q1, which is 183. And what do I end up getting? Mm -hmm. eight. eight. Perfect. So that means that eight is a range of about 50% of the data, right? Everyone understand that so far? Are you sure? Okay. Well, you guys just take a quick break because I know it's is a long lesson. So stop there for a bit. Okay, perfect. All right. So uh, variance is this is the the part that's a little bit weird. Okay, so just bear with me. I'll explain. I'll explain what it is first. Okay, um, and then I hope I'm hoping it just makes a bit more sense. Because when you first look at the formula, it is a little bit it is a little bit strange here. Um, so variance essentially what you're doing is you're finding the mean, but you're finding the mean of the squares of the deviations of your data. Okay, I'll I'll go back and repeat that. Again, okay, so a couple of things before I even get to this. There's probably a couple of words that you're like I have no idea what this means. Deviation. Um, I actually mentioned that yesterday. Um, so that was part of the note. It was one of the little definitions we had. What is a deviation? Anyone want to take a guess? Even just that word, even just in English. What do you think that means? Deviation. Deviation of the data. So what it is, is the difference between your data, between the data value, oops, the data value and the mean. Right? It's essentially, or here's another way of saying that instead of difference, it's how far your data value is from the mean. That's essentially what we're measuring, right? And you probably can take a guess why we care about this, because we want to know how far off is each of your data points, right? So each of your data values that you have, how far is it from the mean? It's actually really similar to residuals. Remember when we talked about residuals, Joe, I think someone asked about residuals and what that means. Well, residual was basically measuring how far each of the, of the points is from the line of best fit. This is actually very, very similar. We're measuring how far each of the actual data values are from the mean. Does everyone understand that so far? So everyone knows, so you're okay with the deviation, right? Do you think, does that, does that sound okay to everyone? So I make sure that that's okay. So what standard deviation is, is it's finding the mean of the deviations squared. And there's a reason we square it. You're, the reason you have to square it before you even find the mean is because we know that some deviations are going to be negative because the value could be smaller than the mean, or some could be positive if they're higher than the mean. But we don't want the, the positive and the negative ones to cancel each other out. So going back to this example, remember with the example with the class, class one and class two? Our, I think our mean was 675 for the second class. 75%. So for the person that has a lower mark than 75%, their deviation is going to be negative, right? Because they're lower than the mean. But for the person that has a higher mark than the mean, their deviation is positive. But if you were, to, what would happen if you were to add positive and negative numbers continuously? They would actually kind of start to cancel each other out. And that's not really, that's not really a good representation of how far you are from the data. So ideally, what the, the, so that's why we want to set this up so that we're taking the mean of the squares of the deviations, all right? That's really, really important. So deviation, just wanna make sure everyone's clear on that, is simply the difference between the value and the actual mean for every single data point you have. So what we are doing here is a couple steps. You first wanna find the difference between each data value, xi, and again, get comfortable with the notation. The little xi right here simply means a data point or a data value. And then we're simply just finding the difference between the data value here and the whole entire mean of the data, which is x with a little dash over top, right? That's the mean. And then what you do next, once you find the difference between each data value and the mean, you are then going to square it. You square every single one of them. 
and then you find the sum of all these values and divide by how many you have. And what does that remind you of? Adding all the values and divide by how many you have? That reminds you of? Mean, exactly, we just did that. That's mean, that's really what we're doing. We're finding the mean of the standard deviation squared. Sorry, of the deviation squared, that's what I meant. I was a step ahead of myself. So the formula looks extremely confusing. Again, this I know some of you, even before we started the lesson, you looked at that and you're like, what is that, right? So just making sure this is on. Yep, it's on. Okay, perfect. Um, so really what this is saying, I'm just going to say this in like the smallest terms I can, or hopefully something a little bit easier. What I am doing is I am simply finding out what the difference is between each of the points and the mean, and then I'm squaring every single one of them. So I find the difference between each value and the mean. And then I square it, I square that, and then I find the sum. Okay, that's really what I'm doing. I'm just finding the difference between each value and the mean. I square that, and then I'm simply adding them up. That's exactly what this is saying. So I know it looks really confusing, but that's what it's saying. So find the difference between the value, the mean, square every single one of them, and then simply add them all. And then, of course, why do we divide by n? Because that's what we do to find mean, right? We take the total sum of all the values we have and divide by how many. That's the whole idea here. Everyone understand this so far? Are you sure? Okay. And I, I promise you that this, this looks really weird, but I feel like when you look at an example, it should make a bit more sense. But I'm not going to lie, you won't get it right away. I feel like, for me at least, it took me a while to understand standard deviation. Like, I, I had to do it a couple more times to kind of get it. So even after the first example, if you're still not getting it, don't stress. You, it'll make more sense the more times you see it. Okay, um, standard deviation, luckily it's actually really related to this. So standard deviation, we already looked at what variance is. Standard deviation is simply the measure of spread that we get when we take the square root of the variance. So why, anyone want to take a guess? Why do you think we have to take the square root? Why do you think we would even do that? So what were we doing up here? We were trying to find the mean, we were basically trying to find the mean of the deviation, right? So the average deviation, that's really what we're doing. The average amount that we differ from the mean. So anyone want to take a guess? Why do we have that? Why are we taking the square root of the variance over here? So notice that I took the deviation squared, right? And the reason I squared it, the whole idea here is that I have to square the deviation because my deviation could be positive or negative. So to kind of make up for it, I square it so that the actual sign of the positive negative doesn't actually uh, cancel each other out, right? So we're essentially saying, I'm not interested in the sign, whether it's positive or negative. So I, I square it in order to kind of cancel out that difference. But then, remember, if we think back to this, if I have a square over here, I actually don't want to, I actually just wanted the, the mean of the deviations. So the whole idea here is to simply take the square root so we can eliminate that square. That's intuitively what the idea is, right? That's not the whole reason why we're doing it, but I just wanted to understand that so you kind of remember, this is why we're taking the square root, right? Like, I hope, hopefully you remember that next step here. So once we have the variance, all you're doing to find standard deviation is you take the square root. Does that make sense? So, everyone okay with the variance part? Kind of? Okay, so I'll, I'll repeat this again. I feel like I have to just say it a couple more times so it makes sense. What we are doing is simply finding the mean of the deviations. This is the deviation. This x, you see that x i minus x, uh, which is with the dash, which is means mean. What we're essentially doing is we're finding out what the difference is, the deviations that are throughout. And then we are squaring every single deviation, right? Because we don't care. Again, it doesn't, so it shouldn't make a difference whether it's positive or negative because we square it anyways. And then we are simply adding all of them up and then dividing by how many we have. 
how many data points we have. That is what, in general, what uh, variance is. And then standard deviation is one step further. You take the square root of Kind of okay? Yeah, I, I know. I, this is like, I, I don't know why I'm expecting you guys to be like, yeah, 100%. So first time you see it, it's weird, right? It, this is the really odd one, but I promise you it's actually not as scary as it looks. It actually is tends to be one of the easier ones, so people get kind of get the habit, right? Um, all right, so let's look at this first example to kind of practice. So it says, find the variance and the standard deviation of this set of data. Okay, so the first thing, let's go back to what variance is. The first thing is we're really finding the mean of this uh, the deviation squared, right? So we can't find the deviation until you know the mean, right? So even though it says find the deviation, sorry, standard deviation, the variance, step number one before anything else is find the mean. This is the first thing you need to do before anything else, find the mean. So anytime that they talk about standard deviation or variance, you have to do the mean first. You actually can't do it without it, right? You need to know what the mean is before anything else. So do the mean first. Let's do that. And if you don't mind, I may not even show the work because I feel like at this point, you guys hopefully know how to do this. For mean, at least. Thirty-eight. Just wanted to check. Okay, so we got thirty-eight. Good. Hopefully that was the correct answer for everyone. All right. So now that we know that the standard, sorry, the mean is thirty-eight, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at all our values here, and I kind of want to really attempt to write on the whiteboard because there's more space. Fortunately, I'm trying to keep it all in here. Uh, what we're essentially gonna do is we're gonna find out how far off each of these values here is from thirty-eight. That's what a deviation is. How far is each of these values from 38? So our next step here, step number one, this, this is technically step number one, right? Find the mean. Step number two, we're going to find the deviations. Okay, we're going to find those deviations for each of these, right? So. For every single one of these, I'm just actually going to list them off. It actually might be easier if I list them off here. And I'm simply going to just find out what the difference is between each of the values here and 38. So I'm going to take 24 minus 38. What's 24 minus 38? Yep. Four, or, oh, I did this. I did my homework. That's okay. 38 minus 24. That, that's okay. No, it, it ends up being, yeah, yeah the same exactly, thing. right? So like my differences, I would just kind of like, so yeah, it's just 30, numbers. it's, yeah, exactly. So all right. my differences were 14, 3, 7, 3, 16, 13, yeah. 2. I'm actually but, glad you mentioned that. So in the end, like it, doesn't it doesn't matter because you're going to, you're going to square them anyways, right? So find the deviations, and you know what? I might as well do it all one big step. Find the deviation squared because I want time, I want space to do step by step. So I'm just actually just going to take each of these here, 24 minus 38, and I'm simply going to square it. So that would give you 196. 196, perfect. Okay, the next one. Yep. Just nine. So 35 minus 38 squared is uh, negative three squared, which is nine. Perfect. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the other one. We have 45 minus 38. Yeah, Matt. Uh, 49. Yeah. Everyone okay with Tom doing this? So all I'm doing is recording all the deviations squared, right? So let's do that. And then I have, I'll just keep going with this. I have 41 minus 38 squared, which is three squared, sorry, three squared, which is nine, right? So let me know if I make a mistake there. 
Everyone understand this so far? So I'm just finding the difference between each of the values and the mean. These are just really, if you're looking at this and you're like, this is really tedious and long, yeah, it is. It's long. That's, so, that's my only complaint about standard deviation. So it's not so much that it's hard, it's just that you literally have a lot of calculations to do, but I think the steps are okay, right? You're just repeating a lot. Next one, 22 minus uh, 38, and then we square it. What does this give me? Yep, 256, perfect. Uh, next one we have duh, 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 51 minus 38 squared, which is 13 squared, which is, yeah, Ali? 169. Uh-huh, and 46 minus 38 squared, yep, 64. 64. And the last one, 40 minus 38 squared is 2 squared, which is, yeah, Ali? Got it. Everyone good so far? And then what this formula basically tells us is that if you want to find the variance, all we need to do is find the mean of each of the standard deviations, sorry, of the deviations squared. So all we're going to do to find the variance is add these up and divide by. Can you just add them up and then take the square root of that? Not yet. No, no, no. no. Uh, that's for standard deviation. No, but like you add those numbers up for your variance, and then you square root it for your. Uh, we got one other step here. So to, to find the variance, you do add them up. You are correct. That's the that's what we do in the numerator. But then I have to divide by. So what do we do here? I'm actually going to go on the side here, guys. So just. Just make sure you write it over here. So uh, we have the deviation squared, that's step number two. Step number three, well, that's our third step here, is we're gonna find the mean of all these deviations squared. So find the mean of deviations squared. So we found the deviations, now we're just finding the mean of deviations squared. So we're going to take 196, our symbol for this, guys, for variance, um, that's the little symbol that we're going to use. So when you have the square there, we're looking at the variance, so we're going to take 196 plus 9 plus 49 plus 9, da, da, da. sorry, I keep going here, plus 256. So it's 169 plus 64 plus 4. And then we're going to divide all this by 8. So that means that our variance is... Yeah? 84.5. 84.5? 94.5. 94 94.5. Was that rounded or...? Uh, no, is that no. it? Okay, 94.5, perfect. Okay, so 94.5 is our variance. But we're not done yet. We have one little extra step. So this is our variance right here. So I'm going to write this here, variance. And how do we find the standard deviation? So our standard deviation, once you have the variance, it's actually not that bad. Standard deviation is simply take the square root, right? So I'm going to do this on this side here. Step number four. So we can see this. Uh, yes. Step number four is find standard deviation. All right, so all I'm gonna do here to find standard deviation is I take the square root of 94.5. Yeah, Ali? Oh, the answer is 9.72 of that 9.72. 9.72, yeah, 9.72 or so, yeah, in black. Like and this is an approximation, right? Perfect. So what that means, roughly speaking, this is always a little hard. And again, we're we'll we'll definitely talk more about this when we get into the last little unit. When we talk about continuous um, continuous distribution. But essentially, what this value of nine point seven two means is that about if your mean, what was our mean here? Our mean was thirty eight. We're essentially saying that roughly speaking, 
a, a big chunk of our data, not all of our data, but a lot of our data will be about 9.72 away from the mean. And that should hopefully make sense, right? Because if our mean is 38, most of our values are somewhere. So if you take away, take away 10 from 38 and then add 10. So what does that give you? 38 minus 10 is 28 and 48. That means most of our values should be between 28 and 48. Would you agree with that? 28 and 48? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, actually it does. Except for, well, not this one, but yeah, it does. Yeah. So it is actually kind of true. So what this, that's what standard deviation really tells you is that it basically tells you how far most of your data will go from the mean. Not, so keyword there, most, right? Not all, just most. And we'll talk a bit, we'll talk more specifically about what percentage that is on average. But generally speaking, this is what the standard deviation tells you is how far our data can go. Um, I'm actually going to show you guys the marks for a test with standard deviation. And I think that, Charlie, you asked one time, you're like, what is that S, S, uh, S, a standard? I think it said STDE. And then you said, what does that mean? It's standard deviation. So hopefully that makes more sense. I'll kind of look at an example right after with standard deviation. Can I do hey. 401? Yeah, of that, course. Go ahead. That Yo, that's no problem. Yeah, go ahead. That's totally so like, <laughs> Does this make sense so far, guys? Okay. So, our I next. Can I take two? Just oh, yeah, in of case course, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's fine. I know. Yeah, I do the same thing. <laughs> they're, they're questionable sometimes. <laughs> and then I'll just, um, when you bring them back to 116, I'll put them in there. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. Thank you. No problem. All right, guys. So, I'm going to go to the next example here. Is it another example of this? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Hopefully, it makes more like it'll. Did everyone kind of find that okay? The first one though. This is a lot of numbers. It's, it's just a lot. lot. Yeah. I actually, you know what? Everyone's very intimidated by standard deviation. I don't actually think it's actually that hard. It's more just that it, it is. It can be a little bit tedious, right? Because of how many steps there are. Okay, let's look at another one. Um, so we're comparing two different classes. You know what? I was, I actually initially wanted you guys to kind of compare the two classes. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, just trying to think if we have space for this. Because I'm just trying my best to kind of write it all in one space here. Uh, you know what? Let's just, I'm going to make this question a little bit easier. I know it initially says there, find the range, quart quartile, interquartile range. Take that out. Let's just focus on standard deviation and uh, variance, okay? So I'm going to reduce that question a little bit. Instead of doing um, interquartile range and looking at range, all that stuff, we're just going to focus on variance and standard deviation. So let's do the first one together. Let's just go step by step here. Okay? It's actually good to kind of practice with these questions. We'll get a little bit better the more times you do it. Okay, so for class A, the first thing I should probably do is figure out what my mean is. And actually, I know what it is because uh, we did it in the first part at the very beginning of the lesson. I think it was 76, right? Is that correct, guys? Oh, these are the same numbers? As yeah, the it's the same ones. Yeah. I believe, it, just correct me if I'm wrong on that. I really don't know. Those are the numbers. So what I'm going to do here, I feel like it actually, instead of me writing out all the different steps. Some of you might find this a little bit easier. I'm actually gonna find, I'm almost gonna make like a little table for this, right? So I'm gonna write here marks. And underneath here, I'm gonna write deviation. And underneath, I'm gonna write uh, square. Deviation and Deviation squared. Okay, so I'm going to kind of keep track of all the marks here, the deviations, and also what happens when I square them. Okay, first step, I have 75, 76, 73, 74, 78. Yeah, I'm not going to run out of space, but I'll, I'll do my best to squeeze it in here. 75, 76, 73, 74, 75, 78. Oh, I missed something. 
the, the, sorry guys, 74, 75, 78, 80, 82, 77, and 70. Okay, I just barely made it there. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to calculate what the deviation is. And then I'm going to square each of them, and then I'm going to add them all up, okay? So find the mean. All right, let's do the first one there. So 75, what's the deviation for 75? So how far is it from the mean? One off. One off, right? Square? One. Uh, 76, how far is that from the mean here? It isn't. It isn't. So standard deviation is zero. Sorry, uh, the deviation squared is zero. Uh, 73, how far is it from 76? Uh, three off. Three off, but it's three below, right? So 73 minus 76 is negative three. But the nice thing about doing variance is that we actually squared in the end anyways, right? So, so it goes back to positive. So it goes back to positive. Right. Anyways. The next one, 74 to 76. How far is that? Yep. Uh, two away. Two away. Squared. I don't know if you find this easier. Sometimes it's just easier on the table, like instead of like actually listing off all the calculations, right? Because uh, really, that's all we're doing is we're just looking at each value and we're saying how far is it from this one here. That's all we're doing. Yeah. Question. Yeah. I'm gonna seventy-three. Quick. Can I because on? it was seventy. Oh, so the, yeah. Thanks, Marcus. I should be consistent. Seventy-four. It should be negative two. Correct. Thank you. But in the end, it gets squared anyways, but you're right. I should be consistent with it. So 75 to 76, so that's 1 below, so that's negative 1. And negative 1 squared is 1. Sorry, was that? That should also be negative 1 if I'm being consistent. Thank you. Uh, 78 uh, minus 76. So sorry about that. This should be negative 1, just to be clear. Uh, 78 minus 76 gives you 1. So that gives you 2 squared for 80 minus 76 is 4, and you square 16. 82 minus 76 is, yep, you square, you get 36. 77 minus 76 is 1, and you square, you get 1. And 70 minus 76 is negative 6, and you square, and you get 36. So then what we're doing now is we're going to add all the deviations squared. So our variance is going to be the sum of deviation squared divided by how many we have, how many data points we have, right? So how many values do we have here? We have a total of 10. So what's the sum of all the deviations squared? So let's do the math here. Why is that? Why is the circle two the symbol? So squared is that's very that represents variance. So the reason it's squared is because we're almost because uh, we're taking the deviation squared, right? That's the kind of it's almost a representation of it, right? We are not just finding the mean of the deviation, we're taking the mean of the deviation squared. So variance. So variance is the one that has a squared, and then without the square, it's standard deviation. Standard deviation is the one that we are interested in the most. Of, right? So Oh, so but we still look at, we, we have to do the variance first, like you have to go through, like you don't have a choice, if you're doing standard deviation, you have to find the mean and the variance, right? It's kind of a, you end up getting all three. But why would you have to find the variance to do the normal one? Sorry? Why would, have to, why would you have to find the variance to do standard? Because standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So we need to figure out what the variance is first before we can take the square root. So what's the point of in that table having three of those? DV, oh, I mean, I didn't have to subdivide it, right? I could have just done deviation squared, but so I just wanted to show you the deviation first and then the deviation squared. So deviation isn't important then for anything? It isn't. It is important for you to know how far it is from it, but we're using, we're essentially using that 
to help us figure out the deviation oh, squared. So, so right? it's, like, it's a help. Yeah, it's like the the step before we get. But it's a self. No questions are gonna want you to, to have the deviation. Well, sometimes we do get into it. Kind of links in with residuals almost, right? It has some similarities with that. So residuals is looking at the difference between the data points, like points on your graph, and the line of best fit. But hopefully you see the connection. I know you asked about residuals. You're like, well, when are we using that? Well, th really, residuals are important because it tells you how far each of the points are from your line of best fit, which is, has some similarities with this, except that this is one variable that. So I don't want to confuse you completely, right? That was when we looked at line of best fit. But it's similar, similar idea, I guess you could say. But it's not the, it's not the same, right? I think there's a lot of definitions. Yeah. That you need to use other things with other definitions to find. You know, yeah, it, it is. Trying yeah. to find the standard deviation, and then we're using deviation like, squares and variance. And yeah, and it doesn't help that the name itself, like deviation, yeah. Confusing. Yeah, it is a little confusing, right? Because we're using deviation. And even myself, when I was saying, I kept saying standard deviation, I'm like, no, it's just deviation, right? Standard deviation is actually what we're going to calculate at the next step, right? Once we take the square root of the variance. So first, let's find the variance, and then we're going to take the square root. So we're going to find the sum of all these deviations squared. So what does that end up giving me? I think I got 108. Is that what everyone got? 108? 108 divided by 10, so that gives us 10.8. So that's our variance. So we're not done yet. So if it's asking us for standard deviation, that will be the square root of the variance. And I'm just going to put the name here so you remember it. Standard deviation. And I'm too lazy to write standard deviation, so I'll just write S, STD deviation, right? And then the, there's a different way of, there's a short form for standard deviation. Um, instead of actually writing out the symbol, sometimes the book will use SD. Okay, and actually, I know some of you said that you did some research into papers. They mentioned standard deviation a lot. How many of you have seen that word already? I think when you were doing research, you probably saw that word a couple, come up a couple times. So sometimes instead of writing the actual symbol, they write SD. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, it's about 3.29 if you want to get that. 3.29? I think that's fine. Yeah, that's okay. So it's approximately 3.29. Oh, wait. So, oh, I thought the symbol for, uh, what's up here? Variance? I mm -hmm. thought that was a circle with a line and then the standard view backwards view with the line. I didn't know they were the same symbol. It's the same symbol. One, one is just literally, and hopefully that makes sense, right? One is just the square of it, and then that's why if you want to find the standard deviation, you take the square root because you're going to get rid of the square. Oh, that's not even that hard. Right? No, it's not that bad. No, they're 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 linked with each other, right? They just have some yeah. confusion and stuff yeah. to do with them. Does this make any sense so far, guys? I think so. So what this means approximately, so going back to the definition, what this kind of means, roughly, right? Not fully. Roughly means is that if your average is 76% and you were to, and let's say that you were to add 3.29 and then subtract 3.29 from 76%. So what is that? Let's just do a little bit of math here. 76, if I add 3.29%, what do I get? 79.29%. And if I take away uh, 3.29, what do I get? What are you doing there? I, I'm just subtracting off. I just want to show you kind of roughly what standard deviation means. I'm, I'm essentially saying I'm adding 3.29 to 76, and I'm subtracting 3.29 from 76. Because so that's what standard deviation is. It tells you how far from the mean most of your data will be. So if I were to add 3.29 to 76, and then subtract 3.29 from 76, what do I end up getting here? It's actually a I mean, like basically half the students are between that range. Exactly. The, That's what this tells you. Yeah. That's, it tells you that most students are going to be between this range, right? So what would this one be here? It's not 70, uh, 72 point. Sorry, guys. I'm having a total of brain fart. I actually do need your help. So 76 minus 3.29. So 
So that ends up giving you 72.71. Right? Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So that's a standard deviation. So standard deviation, roughly speaking, what this means is that about the majority of your marks, not all of them, the majority of students should have marks in this kind of range. And let's look at our data and see how true that is, right? Uh, yeah, is it the, within the range? Yep. Yeah. Yes, 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 no, no, yes, no. So out of the 10 there, only three of them were not in that range. So what would you say? That's pretty, that's decently accurate, right? So that's really what standard deviation does, is it roughly tells you how many values are going to be, how far, like how far you can go from the mean so that you still capture the majority of your points. That's really what we're doing there. Yeah, Joe? So now, okay, that makes sense to me now, standard deviation. But then variance, like above it? Variance is honestly not really that helpful for us now. Like it doesn't really, it's just kind of like the step that you have to take before you get to the standard Yeah, but what, what, like, what does that mean? I actually, yeah, do you have a better, yeah, yes, sir? Yeah, so the reason we're defining the variance first, we want to know the magnitude of distance things are away from the mean, right? like the size, which means you don't want negative numbers. So exactly. So squaring everything. So, everything positive. Yeah. so in that, so initially when we looked at this, right, when we were looking at deviation, remember how it was keeping track of whether it was positive or negative? If you if you, if I didn't keep if I didn't keep track of that, like if sorry if I didn't actually square them, you would actually be adding them all up. Let's say that you're finding the sum of the deviations. Because I think you asked that. You're like, why did you have to do that square part anyways? If I were to add these up, the positives and the negatives will actually cancel each other out, and it would make it look like the deviation is closer to zero when it's actually not. All right. So we have to square the value to actually say, you know what, let's not even consider whether it's positive or negative. Let's just square the value. So we're just looking at how large the value is altogether. But then in the last step, when you find a standard deviation, you then take the square root to cancel it out. Does that make sense? I know it seems like it's, it's a lot, right? But hopefully you're understanding uh, how to find it. Hopefully that makes sense. And also what it means, right? And this is a rough estimation because I know you're probably looking at that and you're like, well, not all the values are within this range. Yes, not all of them are going to be within that range, but the majority are. And actually, Mr. Uh, Mr. Edwards, that's his next lesson. He's going to talk a little bit more about, or not the next one, but for tomorrow, I think, right? You're going to go, or next week, we're going to go over the exact percentage that are within one standard deviation. So this will make more sense, as, again, once we kind of continue on with the lessons. But for now, all you need to know is how to find standard deviation, and roughly speaking, what it means, right? So it just tells you how far you are from the data. Everyone okay with this so far? All right. So uh, the second example, I know I have a second example on there. If you guys don't mind, I may actually skip that one. Um, and that might be for you to kind of practice with. So I'll maybe leave that one for you to just practice on your own. Um, I can put the solution up later so you can kind of compare it. Um, I won't actually finish the whole entire question, but or do you want me to do another one? Just, or you think you're okay? I can go back to it, but I actually think I kind of want to just go through the harder examples with the group because I feel like those ones are a little bit tricky. Okay, so everyone okay with standard devi deviation, roughly speaking, hopefully? All right, so our next part. What do we do when we have group data? So group data, we actually did it over here uh, when we corrected the homework. So group data is essentially when you have a table of values and you, instead of actually listing off each of the individual data, um, the va each of the individual values of the data that you have there, you actually put it into groups, right? You put it into intervals. So if you want to find the standard deviation of this group data, then before you even start with anything else, you want to find out what the midpoint is. We actually talked about midpoint when we did this example, so hopefully that makes more sense. Don't even worry about write, uh, reading this because I actually wrote that last night. I was extremely tired. I had a long week, sorry guys. And I was extremely tired and today I even read it and I was like, I don't even know what, what I meant to write. It was a little confusing. This is the formula for standard deviation. And again, this one looks scarier. I know some of you just made that face. It looks scarier than the other one. 
but I promise you, you're doing the exact same thing. So the whole idea here is that you are simply taking, instead of taking the values, the individual data point values that you have there, we are actually using the midpoints for each of the intervals to help us out. And then for the midpoints, you are then finding out what the difference is from the midpoint to the mean, and you are squaring it, just like you did before. So it's actually not that difference. You're finding the deviation of, the, of each of the midpoints from the mean. That's all you're doing, and you're squaring it, just like before. The only difference is once you have this part right here, you're going to be multiplying it by the frequency. And the reason you multiply by the frequency is because we're essentially saying we have this many points that are this far away from the mean. And so all you need to do instead of adding over and over again, you multiply. So the same idea, really similar idea, except that you're multiplying by the frequency before you add them up. That's the only difference. And then the, everything else is the exact same. You're still dividing by n. You're still taking the square root to find standard deviation. So nothing is really that different. There's just one little added twist that you have to use the midpoint instead of the actual data point. Is everyone kind of following so far? All right. So I'm going to try this one. I think it'll make, I know some of you are kind of making that face. It makes way more sense with an example. And I think if you if you understood how to do the other ones, this is not that different, I promise you. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do in this one is I'm actually going to give you a table to kind of keep track of it. And I think that this is something that you maybe should use if you're really finding these ones hard, right? Uh, definitely keep a table. And again, your your task on Friday, guys, is open book. So any task tomorrow. It's it's basically a task. I just call it task because it's a little different in the sense that it's instead of like a bunch of smaller questions, it's like almost like two or three big questions. Right there. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is actually real data that I have here. I've, I've done this, uh, obviously I'm a math teacher and I teach a bunch of students, so you can guess I do this all the time. I actually, I don't know why I love doing this. I actually always make a graph of all my, my classes and their marks, just for fun. I don't know, I just really, I really like looking at all the data for some reason. It's just really fun to see like, okay, where are all my students at, right? It gives me a good visual of how everyone's doing, right? Uh, so what I did here is I collected marks for a grade nine class, 29 students, and I put their marks in intervals. And then I used this graph to put it all together. So first thing is I want you to obviously fill in the frequency table, right? Which is this frequency here. That's pretty easy. We could probably do this one together. And then what I want you to do is use this table to kind of help you figure out what the standard deviation of this class will be. So before we even get to anything hard, I give you a really big hint here. I already see some hard stuff. Sorry? I already see some hard stuff. Yeah, it does, it does, yeah. Look at the last column right there. What's the last column? Oh, yeah. That's one. Okay, one, I'll explain. One, 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 one. Guys, relax, relax. Yeah. Okay, so what is FI? So one quick thing. So FI, do, who remembers this from yesterday? Frequency. frequency, yeah. It's just the frequency of each of the points that you have. That's all it is, right? So we're essentially just saying it's the frequency of each of the intervals that we have in this case. So all we're really, all I'm really asking you to do here is just write the frequencies for each of these intervals here. That's all I'm asking you to do. So that's the first part. We can do this part together. So let's figure out what the frequency is for each of these uh, intervals. So for the first one, 50 to 59. This is the four or whatever, right? Yep. <laughs> Frequency is just counting. Yeah, that's all I need. Yeah. yeah. Next one. Eight. What do we got next? Yep. Seven, seven. Perfect. And if you add them up, you should just double check that there's 29 students. So 7 plus 8, that's 15, plus 14, yeah, it's 29. Exactly. Okay, so the issue with the data that I gave you here, and hopefully you kind of see the problem with this, if I give you 29 pieces of data, then you would have to, you know what we did before? You would have to do the stand, you would have to do the deviation squared for 29 pieces of data. Um, I guarantee you that would be that would actually be easier, believe it or not, be less confusing but more time consuming for you, right? And you would be there all day and you would absolutely hate doing that, right? That would be torture. 
right? That's not fun because 29 times you have to do that. That's not the best way to do this. So the best way is to actually consider the midpoint of each of these intervals, okay? So what we're gonna do, because I gave you the marks and I gave it to you in a range, I don't actually know. So I'm telling you that there's four people that have a mark from 50 to 59. But do, do I know how many have got 51, 52? We don't actually know which percentage they got. We just know it's 50, 59. So it's actually not that helpful yet. Now, technically, this should be 50 to 60, right? And it would be, and because if we're looking at marks, we're looking at continuous data. But why did I kind of cut it off at 59? Because I know we said marks are continuous because I can give you exact marks. Like, for example, when I calculate your mark, it's to a decimal. But at the end of the day, when I give you your mark, your final mark, do I give it to you in a decimal form? No. no. I just give you a whole number, right? Unless I'm really weird about it, but I'm going to give you just a whole number. So even though marks are discontinuous, in this case, the way that I present the final mark, it's going to be discrete. So technically, this is 50 to 60. Think of it that way. So what would be the midpoint here? Yeah. 55, 65. 55, 65, 75, 85, 95. Perfect. So we're going to use the midpoints to help us figure out what the mean is, right? So instead of us, so in, you know how in the other example we had 29 different values and we had to find a standard uh, deviation squared for each one? We are now not considering all 29 separately. We're actually just saying, you know, these four that are in this interval, just use 55 for all of them. You know, these three that are in this interval, use 65 for all of them. Yeah, Joe? Wait, why did you change it from 50 to 60? Because under the 60 below it, it's 50 to 60. Yes, so in continuous data, once you get to the very end of it, like once you're at that last interval, you automatically kind of switch over to the next interval. Because it's con in continuous data, we can be very precise about our answer. So when we say up to 60, this is where it gets tricky. So how many of you took advanced functions last year? Yeah. So we did, okay. Do you remember, I'm sure you talked about this. Advanced functions or no? Ad function, advanced functions. Oh, even in functions, you probably learned this. Maybe one of them. The open brackets means yeah. that you don't include the endpoint. Did you? How many of you heard of Oh yeah, yeah. One open brackets one means you open. you yeah. are saying you include the end. Sorry, you don't include the endpoint, and you just start at like the cuffs of that endpoint, right? That's essentially what we're saying. So when we say sixty, I should be clear that it's like fifty open brackets. We're essentially saying we're not exactly including sixty. Sixty is going to be included in the next group. So it kind of goes 50 to 60, and then it switches over to 60 to 70. I thought it was easier when it was 50 to 59. Yeah, what it, what, it works better. Than 60 for me, but you know what? I, it could just be the way you look at it. I think, it, you know, I think it's because for me, I'm like, marks are continuous. So I like to think of it as like 50 to 60. That makes more sense. That's why, well, you saw my confusion here. I was confused by that one. Because I was like, why are they listing it like that, right? But as long as you just remember that you're using the point that's in the middle, the valley that's right in the middle of it. Right, which generally speaking, if you ever get have any doubts about that, I feel like this is one of those things that I'll even help you if you're not sure. I would just honestly help you out with the midpoints, right? Because sometimes the intervals are a little bit off. Essential, we're saying is we're picking the point that is right in the middle of. It. Yeah. One reason I'm a little confused is because when you were doing a different question earlier, I forget what it was, but I think it was like 50, 59. Mm -hmm. You chose the midpoint as like 54. Was it this one here? Yeah, yeah, I think I initially picked 94, but then I went back to it and I was like, actually, it makes more sense to do 95, right? And I think we said, because we're like, we're looking at a decade, so what's the middle of a decade? It's 95, it's, it wouldn't be 94, right? Yeah. So we are almost, even though we're, we're essentially saying 1992-2000, let's be honest, right? We're saying 1999 because 1999 will become, like, you know, it becomes 2000, but really... Yeah, exactly. We're just saying, like, once it's 2000, then you're kind of like, oh, you're in that new decade. And that's it's similar to marks, right? Like, we're basically saying, actually, think of it very similar to, like, the years, right? We're saying 1999, you know, Jan I was going to say January, December 31st, 1999. The next day, you're at 2000, right? But really, if you're counting the number of years, it's still 10, right? You don't say it's 9. So then you're just picking out half of it, which would be 1995, right? It is a little confusing. I know. I Honestly, I feel like we talked a lot about continuous discrete. It, it, it is a little bit tricky, right? But in this case, we're just going to assume, I will give it to you, honestly, that's fine. The midpoint, let's just assume it's 55, 65, 75, and so on, right? So, 
we are not done yet. So we have our midpoints, but before we even get to standard deviation, you're going to notice something weird here. This is asking you to find the deviation of the, of the midpoint to the mean. So what's the problem right now? Do we even know the mean? Do we know the mean here or no? I didn't give you the mean, right? Like, so if we know it, we can yeah. I believe it's four hundred fifty. Four hundred fifty-five. Uh, that can't be the mean, right? Because the mean is what's the average mark? Four hundred fifty-five would be. Uh, maybe you have to just divide by something there. Yeah. So first, we need to figure out what the mean is. So before we even get to this step, we have a little sidetrack here. Let's find the mean first. So to find the mean, we are going to use those midpoint marks to help us out. So we are going to take the midpoint, again, if somebody, if we have four people that are between 50 and 60, let's make our life easy and say those pe four people between 50 and 60 are all 55%. We, we actually don't know if that's true or not, but let's just take a guess. We're going to say it's 55%. So what we're going to do is we're going to take four times 55. Because there are four marks that are within that range, so we assume that they are all 55%. What do we do next? You yeah. The next one? Three yeah. times 65? Three times 65. Perfect. And the next one? Eight times 75. Eight times 75. Yep. And then 7, 85, 7, 85. 85, and then 7 times 95. Then we're gonna divide this whole entire expression, okay, by five. Oh, sorry, no, what am I talking about? Sorry, guys, I'm really tired. Not by five. That's definitely wrong. What is the total number of values that I have? It was a very common mistake I did to divide by five, right? But yeah, twenty-nine. Twenty-nine, because I had twenty-nine students, twenty-nine marks. Does anyone? Did anyone catch my mistake? Why did I just think divide by five? It's good that you guys learn from my mistake. Is there like five more categories? Yeah. Five categories, and so I was thinking five categories, so I'm like, oh, I divided by five. But it's 29, right? Because those categories, those are just categories, right? Those are my intervals that I have here. I actually have a total of 29 different pieces of uh, data. So I divide by 29 altogether. So can anyone tell me what you end up getting for the mean? Yeah? Seventy-eight, about 78.4. Yeah, that's about our average. Oh. Literally the same thing. All right, 78.45. Uh, let's make our life easy because we're, we're going to have to use this calculation a lot. Let's just say it's 78.5, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this one if you guys don't mind. And the reason I'm using this answer is because we're going to use this answer for a couple of steps. So just to make my life a little bit easier and your life easier as well, I'm going to use 78.5. So... Again, there's a reason this is called estimation, right? Because we're estimating, right? We, we're rounding off a couple of things, so it's not going to be perfect, but it should give us a rough idea of what the standard deviation is. Okay, so this is where we get back to somewhat easier, not easier stuff, but at least more familiar to what you've seen. So what I'm actually now going to ask you to do is figure out what the deviation is for each of the midpoints and the mean. So how far is, are each of the midpoints here? From the mean that's really what i'm asking you so we can do this together how far is 55 from 78.5 oh so I'm all right that's all i'm doing yeah all i'm doing is i'm simply taking yeah, yeah, yeah. each of the midpoints here and I'm finding out how far is it from 78.5. This is my this is my mean. So I'm taking 55 minus 78.5. The next one, I'm going to take 65 minus 78.5. So what does that give me? Yeah, Ellie? Negative 13.8. Or sorry. 0.5, right? Nine. Yeah, 0.5. Yeah. I've been doing it. That's okay. Yeah. Does that make sense so far? In a way, the deviations are easier in this one because they have a set interval, right? So you know what they're going up by, right? The next one, you can pretty much take a guess. 
78 minus 70 point, sorry, 75 minus 78.5 is negative 3.5. And the next one over, 85 minus 78.5. Six point five and ninety five minus seventy eight point five sixteen point five. Are you good so far? Perfect. Okay, yeah, this is this is good. You do you understand this so far? This is actually really similar. Does this look that different or no? It's, I feel like initially it looks like what? No, it's so easy when you put it on a chart, yeah. but as soon yeah. as you start doing the, the alphabet equation, yeah. all the numbers. Yeah. <laughs> but you gotta get you gotta get comfortable with the formula, though, guys. I know, I know, it's, I know, I know, it's a pain. It is. Yeah, you gotta go step by step. And absolutely, and you know what? No, and if you want, absolutely, all three, right? That's why I kind of did this example with the chart. I did obviously the first one without the chart, just so you see kind of what we did, the steps through it. But the chart will definitely help, especially with group data, especially with this, right? I feel like if it's individual, I don't know the other ones. You because it was so small, there's only eight of them. You didn't really need a chart. It was easy enough that you could do it. But here, there is no way that you want to do 29 pieces of data. You do not want to do that. And you're also given the frequency, right? So the frequency will actually help you out a lot, right? So now that we know the standard, the deviation for this midpoint, this interval here, we basically have four different marks or four different values that we assume are all 55. So they all have the exact same deviation, right? So really what we're doing is taking negative 23.5 plus negative 23.5 plus negative 23.5 plus negative 23.5. Oh, I forgot the square. Sorry, my bad. Um, but square, right? But instead of actually uh, adding up those four different values, sorry, those that same value four different times, we can just multiply. Now, I forgot one small thing. I totally missed this. Went ahead of myself. Sorry, guys. I'm really tired today. I'm just been a long week, so I apologize if I'm making a lot of mistakes here. So negative, so negative twenty three point five. You are then going to square. And what do you end up getting? That's going to be huge. That's going to be like 400 and something, isn't it? 552.25. Just double check, guys. I could be wrong. Yep, 552.25. Uh, next one over, I have 13.5 and you square it. Or negative 13.5 square it. I end up getting 182.25. Uh, next one, 3.5 and I square it. Doesn't matter if it's negative, I get 12.25. 6.5 and I square it, what do I end up getting? 42.25. And 16.5 and I square it, I end up getting 272.25. Are we good so far? So those, those like a that's our devi those, that's our deviation square. Those, okay, so that's, just that's our deviation square. So you know how we you know how we did the calculation for the deviation squared and we have to do that eight times before. Yeah. This we're only doing it five times. And why are we only doing it five times? We're because five we times. assume we put them all in tables, right? So in a way, it's nice when you group data because instead of doing a bunch of different calculations, you actually have less because you only do it for each table, each uh, interval. Does that make sense? It is awesome. And then what you do is you assume, you're going to assume in this case that all four people in this category had a mark of 55. That's not true. We know that's not true. But we just assume every, just make your life easy. You say, you know what, let's assume everyone is 55. And same with this one, the seven people that are in this interval, we could have had some, like, we could have had like all seven of them get a hundred percent, or we could have all, all seven of them get 90%, right? We could be off, but we're going to just assume all seven of them have a mark of 95 because 95 is in the middle, right? So it makes sense to pick the one in the middle. So then what we're going to do is simply multiply this deviation squared by its frequency. That's all we're doing. So your last step, take this answer over here which is a deviation squared and multiplied by the frequency. So what does that give you? It so, by the frequency. so multiplied by the frequency. We're mul so we're multiplying this. And again, why are we multiplying? Because instead of adding all the deviation squared, you're going to be multiplying. I <laughs> just use expressions there. 
So I know it's okay. So let's do the first one too. Wait, so what are we solving for? Like, what's this last column? Like, what's we are going to be symbol? finding the sum of all the deviation squares. There's 29 de deviation squared. So your answer is going to be big. Of course, it's going to be big because you are adding 29 big numbers. Think of it that way, right? And the, but then remember, you that you are then dividing by 29, right? So we're really just finding the mean of the deviation squares. That's all we're doing. So first of all, let's just uh, multiply this answer here by the frequency. So take 552.25 and multiply by the frequency. Yeah, Ali? 2,200 now. Did everyone get that? So I just took 552.25 multiplied by 4. Feel bad for the cohort that's sampled now. Good luck. <laughs> It's going to be brutal. All right, so 2,209. Everyone okay so far? Okay, the next one. Yep. 546.75. 546.75. And again, all I'm doing is I'm taking this, this deviation squared for that midpoint of 65, and I'm multiplying by 3 because I, ha I assume I have 3 of them, right? So I assume all 3 are 182.25. The next one, I take 12.25 and I multiply by 8. I got 98. The next one, I got 295.75. So I just want to make sure everyone's following so far. All I'm doing is I'm taking the deviation squared, 42.25, and I'm multiplying by 7. That's all I'm doing. Same with this one. I take 12.25, multiply by 8. That gives me 98. And then the last one, I take 272.25, and I'm multiplying by 7. Because there's 7 of them that have this, this deviation squared, right? I assume they have the deviation squared. So 272.25. Multiplied by 7, what does that give me? 1,905.75. And my last step here, add them all up. And again, why am I adding them all up? Because that's what I did before. I added all my deviation squared. So add them all up, and you end up getting... Wait, so that last column there, is that, that's also... Squared, just all of them. That's just all the yeah. It's just all the deviation all squares. Just... I except that I just did. I put it more nicely in the table because I had it all set up in intervals, right? Okay. So instead of me doing this, if I didn't have that table, because I know this looks confusing, you're like, why find this total? My other alternative is to have had twenty nine different little steps, right? But since we put them in intervals, we know that I can just make this a little bit easier for myself. I can add them all up. Now, the reason we did this, by the way, it's always uh, for your for your column name, just so you're clear. You don't want to do this all the time and be like, I'm going to estimate everything, right? Like, you're, the only reason we did this is because in this question, I assumed, again, I had the actual data. I had the real data. But I gave this to you guys. Like, I'm giving, I'm presenting the graph to you in a, in a table like this, right? So you don't actually know. I didn't give you any outside information. So your goal is to then just use the midpoint to estimate, right? Yeah, so if the frequency of all these were just one, right? If it was the only five. If it was individual, if they were individual, you wouldn't have to do that last step, right? No, like if you were had twenty nine different ones, there you wouldn't even put in the column. You would just have twenty nine different steps. So you're just you doing that because they're all. You're doing it because they're an interval, exactly, okay. right? Does no, that make I'm sense? You're only doing it because you didn't have a choice, right? I didn't. I had no. I had no other option. It's not like I gave you the twenty nine marks. If I gave you all twenty nine marks. You would have 29 different calculations to do, right? right? Or, I'll show you another thing. You can use Excel to kind of speed up the process, right? If you had 29 different numbers, you could put it on Excel, and you work. I'm going to show you a command you can use to find standard deviation. All right, so we're going to add all these up. Uh, did everyone get 5,055.25? Okay, perfect. Sorry, 5,055.25. Perfect. And now my last step here is take 5,055.25. And all I'm going to do is divide. So I'm going to go step by step here. The variance. 
I'm going to take 5,055.25, and I'm going to divide by what? Yeah, 29. 29. I end up getting 174.3 uh, But then my suggestion, guys, whenever you're doing these uh, these questions with with a lot of calculations, don't delete the answer from your calculator, right? So if you're still using this answer, don't delete it. Keep it on your calculator. And then what you're going to do next, you to find out what the standard deviation is. Standard deviation this symbol here, all I'm doing is I'm taking the square root of 174.32. So don't delete your answer. Now I'm just going to take the square root. So take the square root of 174.32. I ended up getting 13.2 rounded. Approximately. So that means about if I if my what was my mean again? My mean was seventy eight point five. So let's do a little bit of math here. Seventy eight point five plus thirteen point two. What does that give me? So seventy eight point five is my mean. So if I add uh, thirteen point two, what do I get? Yeah, ninety one point seven. Ninety one point seven or ninety two, and then if I subtract off. The standard deviation, 13.2, what do I get? 65.3. 65.3. So that means that the majority of my marks should be between 65 and 92%. And again, this one is a little hard because it's, it's grouped intervals, so you really can't actually see all the points. But does that roughly kind of make sense? That the majority of people will be in the 60s, maybe up to the 90s? Yeah, it makes sense. You can actually see it visually here, right? Most marks are kind of there, right? So yeah. Why do you say like majority when you, you also said it's 50 Sorry? Like you said like between 91 and 65, that's 50% of the marks? Uh, not 50%, but like the, I would say a big, so to be specific, 67%. We'll talk about that later on in the next lesson, but okay. no, yeah. Just like, like individually, like oh, this was, this was when we look at quartiles. Yeah, so oh. quartiles, I'm actually glad you mentioned that. So just to be clear, standard deviation and variance, what they deal with is the variation between the mean, like, sorry, I'm sorry, uh, they deal with the variation with regards to the mean. And then when we look at interquartile range, we're more focused on the median. So the inter, the first part that we did interquartile range, that had more to do with the median than the actual mean, right? Because we were looking at the position on the line, right? Whereas this one is more dealing with mean, right? We're looking at how far, spread apart it is from the mean whereas the first one was how far apart how far I feel like I'm forgetting what I'm saying how far apart it is from the median that's what the first one was does that make sense yeah. so I'm actually glad you brought that up it is a bit of a difference here is everyone okay with this so far I know it's a lot of information guys yeah Emma? yeah like always a line thank you there you go I forgot that so oh, no, 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 totally good. I'm actually, no, I, I, that was my mistake. Okay, does everyone understand this so far? Uh, I do want to show you how to use Excel to do standard deviation. Uh, this is actually really good for you to do. And also a great way to check your work, right? Like if you want to be sure, you're like, am I doing this the right way? Uh, you definitely want to take advantage of this. So I'm going to show you how to do uh, standard deviation on Excel. So let's say I have a couple of different points here. Uh, I'm just going to pick randomly. Okay, I don't know. Let's pick some random points there. So if I'm listing off values, what I do to, uh, to actually for any command, what I want to start off with first is writing out equals. I'm going to write equals. And then what I'm going to do next is Define standard deviation. That's the one that we're probably going to deal with the most. Uh, you, there's two different types of standard deviations, and I don't want to confuse it too much. There's a standard deviation that's based on the entire population, and then there's one that's based on a sample. For now, honestly, just take the population one. Um, I'll, I'll explain what that actually means later on, but 
you don't have to this is definitely getting way past what we need to know and especially because of how short the course is we don't have time to really talk about the different types of standard deviation calculations we have you're going to be typing in stdev dot p okay so then you type it in and then what you're going to do is you're essentially saying i'm going to calculate the standard deviation where does it start where the from the first cell to the last cell so the first cell is a1 the last cell is a10 so i'm going to type in a1 all the way up to a10 so to be clear you're not always typing in a1 to a10 you're essentially just saying i'm calculating standard deviation from the first cell you have to say what's the first cell there and what's the last cell my last cell is a10 and if you click on this here press enter it'll give you the standard deviation Wait, that's so much quicker than all this math stuff we're doing on our faces. So, but you need to know where it's coming from, right? Like, it's, uh, you don't want to be, like, going into this and be like, well, I just, I don't know what that means, right? Like, you, you want to know how it is calculated in the first place, right? It's good for you well, to just have a background, right? So you, so you but know, you having said this, right? yeah, absolutely. But having yeah. said this, I do think, like, I'll be honest, there's a lot of times in life where, like, it, imagine you're doing research on a project and you're collecting data from, like, a thousand different places, right? Like you have tons and tons of data, you are not going to have any time in the world to be doing all these calculations. That's not realistic, right? Uh, we teach you how it's done because it's good for you to know where it's coming from, right? You want to know yourself where these numbers are coming from. But you do know, hopefully you know as well, that you can use this, especially for your comedy, right? Because some of you have really big sources of data. You definitely want to be able to do standard deviation um, with technology, right? It's definitely going to speed up the process. Does that make sense so far? On the test, though, you do have to show the work, right? So that's, I'm going to ask you to do that. Um, just a small thing. I know I mentioned this yesterday, uh, but I don't know if you missed that on the PowerPoint. And so at the very end of the handout, I have a couple of commands that are really helpful. If you want to do mean, uh, all you have to do is write average, and you can follow the same steps. You write A1 to A10, and it does the mean average of that. If I want to do the median, I do A1. And then I go to A10, and it gives me the median as well. And I'll be honest, as a teacher, what do you guys think I use for, for calculator marks? I use that, right? Like, I, I don't have time to be grabbing a calculator and being like, let me calculate each mark here and do that like a bunch of different times for 20 students, right? No. If I, but what I do in Excel is I basically tell Excel, hey, can you follow these same steps? And then... And then I'll do the rest, right? Like I kind of set up the formula for it, and then it just kind of follows along the pattern, right? Based on the data I get. Uh, another really important command, but this I think this will be really helpful. Let's say that you're adding up, and this will be more for like when you're doing like frequencies, frequency tables, things like that. If I want to multiply two different values, so let's say I have a frequency table and uh, the value is two, and I have a frequency of eleven. So this seems really simple. You're probably wondering like why I would even do this for this. But let's say that these are let's say that these are like values that you have for a test or something for a quiz, and then these are the number of people that got that mark. Just gonna make this up for you. So if you want to find the total frequency here, let's you probably want to multiply, sorry, if you want to find the total amount here, you want to multiply the amount, the, the value here by the frequency. So what we would do is you would take a one. And if you want to multiply an Excel, you simply put that little asterisk sign, and then you write B1. And if you click on that, and the nice thing about Excel, it actually highlights the ones that you're about to do. If you click on it, it gives you a total of 22. Now, let's say I want to do this for all for these other four columns. So I want to do 3 times 5, 5 times 6, 7 times 20. Of course, you can you know, grab a calculator and do that. But sometimes you, let's say you have 100 pieces of data. You don't want to do that 100 different times. So two options, you can go to the side here and then drag down. Or another thing you can do is also double click on that cell and then it goes all the way down, is that correct? Yeah, double click on it. So two different options there. So do you see how that, that did a lot of my, it, it, it did all the calculations for me. I just have to tell itself the, how to do the first one and then it just continues the pattern on. And again, you're probably wondering, well, that seems like a lot of work. Why don't you just multiply them? Yes, because that's four pieces of data. But if you have a hundred pieces of data, you don't want to be doing that, right? Uh, so to simplify your work, drag it all the way down and it does it for you. Does that make sense? 
So it's a lot of different formulas in Excel, guys. Just get comfortable with with learning a lot. Honestly, I've been uh, 